Hello, how to solve this exponential problem? We have t power t equals 7. We are solving for the value of t that satisfies this equation. So, what are we going to do? Now we can do some testing by equating some values to t. So we have t equals 1. If that is the case, that means we have 1 power 1. And this is 1. If you have t equals 2, that means you are going to have 2 to the power of 2. And this equals 4. If you have t equals 3, that means you have 3 power 3. And this is 27. So what you can observe from this is that when t is 3, we have 27. And this 27 is 5 greater than 7, which is what we are looking for. And also, when t equals 2, we have this is also less than 7. Because if when t equals 2, we have 4, and that 4 is less than 7. Now, at this particular point, we can find out the range of values of t that will satisfy this equation. So we can have 2 is less than t, and t is less than 3. So this is the range of values of t that will satisfy this equation. That will make this left-hand side, if you raise it to the power of itself, that will give you 7. So, having gotten this, the next thing will be to solve and find that actual value. We cannot continue to be testing like this. We need to solve and find the value of t that will actually satisfy this equation. So, we are going to make use of natural log. I have natural log of t to the power of t. And this equals natural log of 7. So, if you have natural log of a to the power of b, this equals b times natural log of a. So that means the t here will come behind the natural log. We have t times ln t, and this equals ln 7. So right now, how do we solve this problem? We are now going to make use of what we call the Lambert W function. This is the function that we are going to use to solve this problem right now. And this function is represented with capital letter W. And you only use this when you have an expression such as a times e power a. And your result will be a. You can also use it when you have numbers, but it must be something like 3 times e power 3. It must be in this form. And this equals 3. So, even if you have maybe x times e power x, and you take the Lambert derivative function of it, we are going to have x as the result. So, this is how this function works. That means the expression must obviously be like this before you can use the Lambert derivative function. Now, look at what we have here. That means we need to convert this. to this form. You need to change this. You need to change it to this form so that we can apply the Lambert derivative function. So let's copy this out. We have t times ln t, that is t ln t equals uh, 7. Now what we are going to do next will be for us to do some manipulation. If I have e power ln x, this is the same thing as writing x. Why? Because e can eliminate the ln. That means, instead of me writing this t, I can easily express it as e power ln t. Because e raised to the power of ln will cancel out, so we have t. That means this t, I can express it as this. Then I still have my ln t, and this equals ln 7. 
Now, the whole idea behind this is just to model this to be in the form of this. Remember, there's an E here. So that's why we are introducing this E. There is A here, and there is also the same A here. So we have LNT here, and we have LNT here. Now, the next step will be for us to rearrange it. Remember, there's A before E power A. So I'm going to have LNT before E power LNT. And this equals ln sub. Right now, the next step will be for us to apply the lambda derivative function because the conditions are satisfied. Ln t here, ln t here, and the e is there. Here, the three is here, and the three is here, and the e is here, just like this one here. So we can apply the lambda derivative function denoted capital letter W, I have ln t times e power ln t and this equal to lambda derivative function ln 7. I need to also apply it right here. So when once you apply it right here, the result from this particular left hand side will be ln t. And this equals the lambda derivative function ln7. Now don't forget the fact that we are solving for t, so we need to eliminate this ln and make use of e once again. I have e power ln t equals e power lambda derivative function ln7. Now at this particular point, e cancels the ln. I have t as the output. So right now my t equals e power lambda derivative function ln7. Now, what you can also do is that you can type in this into your calculator, but most scientific calculators do not have this capital letter W. Rather, what they have is what called the product lock. So the product lock is still the same thing as the lambda derivative function denoted with capital W. So you might not see this, you are likely going to see product lock. So what you are going to do will be to type in this into your calculator, e power product lock, product times lock of ln7. Now when once you type in this into your calculator, you are going to have the value of t that will satisfy this equation. So what you are going to have will be approximately into four decimal places, 2.3165. So this becomes the value of t that will satisfy that equation. That means if you have t power t, equals 7, it simply means 2.3165 raised to the power of 2.3165 is approximately equals 7. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the value of t that satisfies this equation. So the key change I hear is just making use of this lambda derivative function and we are going to get it solved. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video. Thank you and see you again.